15. That must have been a, a real sucker punch for you at the end there. Yeah, another tough one to take. Um, look, it was a bit. It was a scrappy game. Uh, weather conditions played a part in that wind. Um, but we, we bit the post, we bit the crossbar, we had one clean off the line, we had a keeper's mate, the majority of the saves in the game. And we've got caught by a second phase of a long throw of it, just going in, going in the box, we won first contact, we turned it back in, missed a second glance and just dropped down to their play and just caught it on the, on the turn. That's felt like a game that you feel you deserved at least a point from. Yeah, at least a point out of it. Look, um, second half we were a little bit better with the ball. Um, Quality wasn't always there, but um, as I said, <clears throat> the amount of opportunities that we created, that we, we should have been looking at three. In terms of um, the start of it, perhaps Torquay on, on top for the opening 20, was that just adapting to perhaps a new system that you're trying to yeah, play? Yeah, look, adapting to it, but also the conditions. The, <laughs> they flipped us, they weren't going to win first half, and uh, we, we got kept pinned, pinned in, sorry. And you could see that from goal kicks, trying to get up there, some were not reaching, even reaching the halfway line. They had some bigger lads on the pitch and uh, they were winning first contact and it was coming straight back. So it was almost to the point that we could have possibly dropped the centre backs down to try and try to play out, but it was not getting the opportunity to be able to speak to them and get, and get that message onto the pitch. So we just had to play the percentage. Yeah. Jordan Davis um, played as behind the strike, uh, behind the striker, played as a striker, hit the bar, hit the post, had one cleared off the line, just couldn't score. Yeah, look, as you said, um, we looked at him just playing behind the striker at first. Um, <clears throat> The all is willing one is stretching behind down the sides. We thought that we could get up, get on down the sides, and we did. And we created opportunities in the back end of it. We, I mean, they had the pressure to stay in the possession in the first half, um, but we had the better opportunities there, keeping positive best saved on. In terms of, um, I guess the story of the game, one over arcing one is the the team itself. Christian Dibble in goal uh, as a start wasn't named on the team sheet. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, look at the minute. Uh, if we had any luck, it'd be no luck, wouldn't it? Um, look, um, Rob's Rob felt was good as he's um, warming up. He wanted to try and give it a goal, but it's it was one of those it's with a sub down and if he takes a goal kick and every uh, or a clearance and it completely goes and looking at a long term injury. So he made a decision it's just best to keep, best to keep him off. Obviously Dan Jarvis started as well in, in that attacking role for you. Perhaps deciding to go with the one striker today as well from the start as well. What was uh, the thinking behind playing Jordan and, and Dan behind? Um, no, look, we, we played him um, a, t a box midfield to say, and looking to try and get Jarvis and Jordan in a little pocket of space that we knew we could create between their um, back four and midfield four. Um, we wasn't great with it in the first half because they could play the high line, but then they pulled the pull back inside to go mark the top of our box, and um, that created space to get down the sides. And we got down a few times um, through to York. We said on another day, maybe he um, could have had a goal. You spoke today before the game about uh, the striker situation. Jordan Ponticelli's out. Um, obviously, the last day of the, the transfer window, you had Jake Bickstaff, Adi Yusuf, for example. Some calling it a gamble. Is that something you can agree with, or is I, there an explanation I for that? It's an amazing thing, isn't it? It's, it's not a gamble, is it? Um, at the time, um, obviously, Jake, he was fifth choice striker at the time. He was about his development for his football club to go forward. Um, so, it's best we would go and get games. We made that decision <clears throat> on the way down to Eastleigh. Um, we got a phone call, I got a phone call, I think about 4.30, 4 o'clock, um, to be made aware of the interest, interest in Addy. Spoke with the players that be at the back of the football club. Um, we were actively looking for another striker, and it was a case of if we get somebody else in, then I'd consider it. Um, as I said at the time, the feedback, um, sorry, the, me the message we relayed to Addy through his agent, and halfway down, um, Dean Oxford, he asked if we could get off the coach, and something I'll consider just in case it happened. We're not a million miles from getting somebody else in ourselves um, before we had a 23 player at the Premier League team. Um, we were not far off and then that got um, retracted the last minute and then we went to an EFL team for a, a player of a League 2 team. We were optimistic on the back end of that and they said yes, you can, we can make it happen if we get our replacement team. And we thought it was going to happen, they were confident they would get theirs in and then they pulled the plug. Then I had a decision to make Raddy call me. Um, I had an agreement with Raddy that he'd stay um, for services. Um, when he called me with an hour and a half left of the transfer window, he told me he was at Chesterfield. I had a decision to make. Um, what's best for us as a group, uh, the culture that we, cre we created and we spoke about and we've made over the course of the season, and what was best for the football club. He'd, that told me his mind had made up and he wanted to be at Chesterfield. And if it didn't happen, I had to think about my group, my changing room. Uh, how his mindset would have been inside there. And also, he asked me, he said, look, I'm out of contract at the end of the season. Um, I've got a young family. And, and he filmed me on the side and I had to realise I'm treated with a human being. If he's not happy with his football club, and 
he didn't get moved and said it was all about whether his mindset would be right to be in our, in our group. In terms of over this weekend, you've obviously got two games and now looking for someone to bring in as a forward to keep on a promotion push. How far along are you in terms of that recruitment stage? Look, we, there's two ends of the scale. We've got um, spots to one um, and others being offered who possibly right at the end of the career and have not done nothing for a long time. Um, one ruled himself out who I uh, reached out to. He just said I would put himself justice and wouldn't do the football, so football club justice. So you appreciate the honesty on that. Um, one or two others not play for a long time and then previously towards their last year, last season when they were playing, had a quite a uh, injury problem. So that's something I'm aware of. Um, and on the other side, we look, you've got 19, 20 year olds who've been released from 23s. Um, I've got one or two coming into training with us tomorrow to have a look at. So I'm optimistic that we'll have at least have one um, by the weekend. Yeah, you mentioned um, you've got a couple of training. Do you say you have offered uh, a deal to a, to a striker as well? No, there's no offer being made out there. Yeah, um, in the case, make sure they come in. Um, background checks, as I said, the, the big thing for football is to have the right culture in the changing room. We've got that. So if I drop the wrong person in there and it disrupts everything, um, the togetherness, the cohesion that we've got, then it, it has to be the right character. So we've got two coming in and I'm aware of a few more and we'll see how they develop over, over the course of the next few days. I guess now it's obviously a massive part of the season. No points over this weekend. You've now got Stockport. That's a, another big one, and, and perhaps time to, to prove it right. Yeah, look, they're all they're all big ones. Um, I'm stood here talking about um, two one nil defeats um, when really we could possibly we should have been looking at six points. Um, today was scrappy, no denying that, um, but we we done more than enough to get something out of the game. In the end, if we'd have been, if we'd have got a point, I'd have probably been saying disappointed on three. We should have seen the game out, um, got, to, got the clean sheet, but we didn't, so we've got to learn from it. It's two second phases of two set players to say, uh, from Friday's corner, and then today the long throw going in, <coughs> where we've been quite resilient to them um, over the last 10, 15 games. Today, on uh, Friday, we've kind of let ourselves down a little touch, but we'll regroup and we'll, we'll go ahead at the weekend and uh, make sure we can uh, do our best for this football club. Finally from me, um, Jay Harris, captain in the side today. Uh, 250th uh, appearance for Wrexham in all competitions. Uh, not many players get to that sort of landmark, but he's been a great servant for yeah, the club. Yeah, he's been a great servant for the football club. It's a great achievement for him. Um, knowing Jay and his character, um, he won't mean much because what the result does yeah, has the effect on him. Well, he, he looked a great achievement for him. Cheers, Dave. Thank you.